Okay, so I uh, I was asked to do a bit of a video, um, just a, a run around of the truck, um, and so that's what I'm going to do right now. So it's a 1990 GMC Sierra. It had a 4.3 liter, and it actually ran fairly decent with with the uh, 4.3 liter in it. Um, and then, but uh, I wanted to try out. The engine was getting old anyways, and I needed to replace it. So I I put a, a, a 350. Um, 5.7 liter uh, engine into it and it actually it's improved um, my ability to drive on wood and uh, just overall a, b a better quality engine I have no complaints with the 4.3 but it was just getting old and needed to replace so we'll jump in the back here it's snowing a bit it's snowing a bit last night um, where are we going to start here well let's start with the hopper um, so as you can see well, let's see if I can get a, uh, a full picture of, it's a Wayne Keith system, so obviously we got the, uh, the gasifier and the heat exchanger and the hay filter in the back with the cooling rails on each side. Um, a few things different. Uh, the hopper. A lot of guys using barrel lids for these uh, hopper, hopper lids. I originally had it and you can see it's still that's the barrel lid there um, and I couldn't get it sealed properly it basically uh, wouldn't wouldn't seal properly it was leaking puffing puffing back and just causing loads of trouble I couldn't get a hold of the barrel rings uh, with clamps they were uh, basically just uh, oil oil can drums from uh, truck truck like 14 inch barrel uh, trucking oil drums and they have the tabs on them and they don't seal very well at all and then the uh, I found that the the um, gaskets in them when they get hot and the tar gets kind of up and around the uh, adhesive they they fall off and I mean you, you it just just turns into a mess so I ended up I got frustrated so I made my own lid so basically it's a couple pieces of plate here with a gasket, um, I used uh, a gasket. Um, it's called the right, the right stuff, and it's an automotive uh, gasket, high heat um, silicone. And uh, I put it on the one side, let it tack up a bit, grease the upper lid, and then uh, put it together and leave it for a day. And then I take it off, and it makes a uh, a, ga a uh, really solid gasket on the uh, bottom flange and it doesn't have it doesn't stick to the top um these flanges are about uh oh let's say that well you can see they're probably about four inches um wide and i i did that on purpose because the wider the flange the less chance uh gas will be escaping and and my theory turned out to be correct because the wider you have it uh the more gasket basically there is to uh to stop it so there's four bolts um, and they're just connected on the bottom like this could do that a little bit more fancy but uh, I didn't have a quarter inch drill so these are a little bit less than quarter inch and uh, I just haven't sourced bolts yet for those anyways that seems to be working okay so these clamp down there's four in, uh, one in each corner one two three four the I had this thing here on uh, originally with when I was using the other the other barrels uh, other barrel lids with the tabs I didn't want to take it off because it kind of looks fancy and it really serves no purpose right now but uh, it used to but it kind of looks cool so I kept it so but that uh, kind of screwed up my spacing on the sides so basically when I clamp this one down I would still have a bit of a leak here so I had to use a, um, a C clamp just to um, fix that problem it works good it's fast to come off I could have put another bolt there but I'm just uh, wanted to get her done so it works okay that way um, that's it with the lid Everything else on the gasifier is basically to wane specs. Um, this is my condensate tank, a hopper condensate tank. So it's basically it's an old, uh, made out of an old antique uh, milk can. My dad, uh, well, my family, my dad and my grandfather and his grand or his father, were all uh, dairy farmers. So 
we have a lot of these old milk cans laying around and they're basically just rusting up and so I cut one up and made it into my condensate tank um, uh, collection uh, device and basically the inlet is that two inch uh, pipe there coupled to the the um, the rail or well the uh, this rail here and uh, that's also to, to drain it I take that cup that uh, rubber coupling off unscrew it and then I just dump it um, it works really been working really good especially in the winter the condensate doesn't freeze and the tar will actually, uh, if I if I run it uh, for long enough, the gasifier, the tar stays liquid, or um, uh, at a uh, high enough viscosity, I guess, is um, to uh, pour out of that two inch uh, two inch uh, opening there. So I haven't had to open this up. This is uh, this is sealed with silicone, so it has a good seal. Um, I could open that up if I wanted to, but I just really haven't needed needed to. So anywho, let's move on. Uh, so the, the main difference with mine is this heat exchanger here. Um, I did have the uh, heat exchanger that Wayne goes through in his um, YouTube videos and his uh, his plans. I did I did originally have that one. Um, but I ran into some trouble. So I didn't, when I first made the gasifier, I didn't um, put mounting bolts from uh, here, from the pipes to the cooling rails, or attach the gasifier to the actual bed of the truck. Um, and they suggest that you do that because basically this thing will sway back and forth kind of thing. Um, and eventually, well, basically all that's holding the gasifier is this joint here and the joint at the, the connection at the cooling rails at the top of the heat exchanger. So that's basically what I had originally and uh, I was driving it pretty, you know, I was, I was, um, driving it pretty good. So I was driving 80, 90 kilometers an hour or whatever. So I was getting it pretty hot. And this, I made this originally out of an old um, uh, oil barrel. Uh, the same thing I made out of the, uh, the hopper lid. So those really uh, tin, they're like a tin and uh, they're for um, transport truck oil, basically. So I made the heat exchanger out of that. It's very thin metal, thinner than barrels. So uh, the welds, uh, basically under the, the heating and cooling, as well as the uh, the basically there's a lot of stress that happens in here if you don't uh, attach your gasifier to the cooling rails it all it flexes right at that joint and eventually over time it cracked and uh, I needed to replace it so I ended up I didn't like the way that was d designed um, it worked okay but just not for me not for my purposes so anyways I made this flange and this is quarter inch uh, seven inch di uh, internal diameter pipe and then I, I welded flanges on them so basically I can I can take these bolts out and uh, take it apart which is nice a nice feature uh, if you ever have to do any type of um, maintenance or anything with the with just uh, with just the heat exchanger which I've had I've had to take it out probably three or four times just for different things um, and it's been holding up pretty good. I, you can see I <clears throat> maybe have been running a little bit hard because I got a little bit of uh, paint kind of coming off here. Um, this is basically the hottest point that, that it gets um, just right at this connection. Um, I've been I've been running it, uh, oh, I've been kind of testing a little bit uh, lately and been running about 100, 110 uh, kilometers an hour at a pretty constant uh, constant rate um, for a couple minutes at least anyways and uh, you can see it's getting a little bit hot this is just uh, this is just trim clad paint so I mean it's not high temp either so I mean it's hot but it's not super super hot and the temperatures are staying pretty pretty good at the uh, cooling rails so uh, I'm just gonna keep watching it and, and see uh, kind of just work my way into uh, seeing what this gas fire can do um, then I have this instead of so I mounted there's a, a plate uh, there and then a, a stand basically so that gives a little bit more support to 
for the heat exchanger and gasifier unit in the bed if it's mounted that way. The only problem with that is that I can't use, what Wayne uses is that little two inch um, uh, fitting at the bottom to uh, empty his heat exchanger out. So I ended up putting uh, this plate on and it's the same thing, it's a uh, the same type of pipe, 7 inch internal diameter pipe with a, uh, a flange on here so I can just quickly take this off, take the bolts off um, and uh, get at the uh, um, clean it out basically of char and I've had to do that a couple times um, it seems to be uh, making, pulling a lot of char into the uh, into the heat exchanger which I don't know it, it, it's running good so I don't really see a huge problem with that um, and the nice thing also about this plate is that uh, you can take it off and when you're trying to fit that pipe in in, in the internal uh, the internal workings of the the heat exchanger uh, when you're trying to fit them together I mean you can get in there and you can look and you can you feel around with your hand and it's it's a lot I find it's a lot handier um, in that respect um, than uh, than otherwise not having it. Um, we are actually in the process of building another gasifier for my father and I think what we might do is uh, we might have this heat exchanger basically sit, be the full, the full length and sit on the truck bed and then have two access ports, one here and then one at the bottom um, and that way this whole thing can fill with char um, and you won't have to clean this often. I finally have to clean, I have to clean this well less than what um, is in the book or on things so probably every every month I would say and I don't know how many miles that is I haven't really calculated but a little bit more than I think what, uh, what you would normally do um, probably because I'm just pulling harder on it so then at the top I didn't use the barrel lids again I used a big flange system same thing as the hopper hopper lid uh, with the gasket and whatnot um, for my valves, I've just used sewer valves. The one advantage I can see over the tennis balls, um, I mean, I, they look like the tennis balls work really well. Um, and you can, Wayne's is cab operated, which mine isn't. Basically, they're close enough to the side rails that I can get out and push and pull them. Um, and I mean, with this one, basically it's either on when you're driving on wood or it's off when you're when you're uh, basically want the fire to go out so no problem with uh, it just not being able to I, I find anyways not being able to use it in the cab the one advantage is that you can put this um, valve uh, in front of your blowers so here's the valve and then down here are my blowers so if I shut my valve here then I'm not what will happen is wood gas will travel up through this pipe and if the valve isn't here it will travel all the way down and will sit in your blowers and I found that uh, it looks like it's causing a bit of corrosion in my blowers um, when I've taken them apart and uh, looked at them the, the wood gas is slightly acidic and it, it looks like it will corrode uh, metal so uh, I would try uh, my uh, I basically try and reduce how much wood gas gets near my blowers so I put the valve in front of the blowers so that basically that won't happen or it will at least reduce the amount of wood gas that gets through also when I when I first mounted these I mounted them um, uh, uh, horizontal to the truck box so as this is vertical, so I've mounted them horizontal. And what will happen is if, if you mount them horizontal, the good gas will come and then it will condense and the water will sit in these in, in your pipes here and uh, they'll freeze up and uh, they'll just cause more corrosion if the water sits in there. So having them placed vertically, whatever type of blowers you're using, having them placed vertically um, is a better better plan because then the, the water it will uh, will will naturally drain out of them um, and then with the back valve here I have a uh, I didn't use a tennis ball again basically I use the same type of uh, sewer blower and uh, it's operated at the back oh. sometimes that happens I can't pull it so I made myself a little device here 
is uh, just a rod. There we go. It just kind of freezes up in the night. You know what? Now it'll it'll uh, it'll work now. I think so. That's basically on the uh, sewer um, uh, RV sewer uh, slide valve, and I can pull that, and that operates the suction blowers, and. Um, it is also in front of the suction blowers, so basically I won't have any wood gas that's kind of uh, staying in those uh, when I shut it. Um, and that seems to be working pretty good. <clears throat> I don't necessarily need to operate it. I've never had the the need to operate it in the cab. Basically, I use it uh, for refilling the um, refilling the hopper, which I'd be back in the back anyways, or I would, uh, or on initial startups, which I'm not driving the truck usually on initial startups. Um, when I, <clears throat> on the initial startups, what will happen is I'll get the fire ready. Um, so I'll have that open, and I have a little valve here, a uh, ball valve on my cooling rails. And basically that's because uh, I'm sometimes not as patient as I should be and uh, I'll try and drive it without the gas being ready and uh, I'll end up wasting a lot of gas and, and screwing around and and uh, that way so this way it's very easy for me to check the uh, basically I open that valve and I can check the quality of the gas and I can put it back up and uh, just just see if the gas will hold a flame and uh, and whatnot I Wayne has been driving them really for a long time now and he can he can see just by the uh, the type of smoke that comes out of the the suction blowers uh, whether the gas is ready or not um, I'm learning but I'm not at that point yet so I like to just flare the gas and make sure it 